Okay, I'm going to try and do this quickly. I've never been into this machine before, but I think I have the idea from another guy on YouTube. I'll give you the attribution for that when I upload this. So, the short story is I washed a couple of small rugs that I shouldn't have washed. They totally came apart. They filled the machine with dirt, and uh, it's been throwing all kinds of code since then. It finally after rinsing it and cleaning it and trying to clean it it's sort of settled on this function 9 error 1 which the internet says is a drain issue now apparently this has a drain trap down underneath the drum in the center of the machine on the front and uh, so I'm going to try and take it apart I've already got the top off I've been messing with that because that's how you get out the door latch um, three screws along the top and back of the machine and the top slides back and up them off. It's very simple. Pull the power and uh, reach down behind the latch on the right inside, sort of opposite side of where the soap goes, and there's a little tab you just pull up on this, the latch and it'll let you open the door. So anyway, the top's off. Everything else is not off, and uh, I'm going to see how this goes. So here we go. So first thing is, of course, you pull the power. Um, you can see this thing keeps power for a little bit after the plug is out. The nut driver is a quarter inch head on these nuts. So there's one, two, three, four at the bottom of the machine. Um, apparently there's a couple of screws here and here. They look like Torx drive, so I'll let you know what that is. Um, and then inside the machine, so that I'm gonna take my watch off so I don't mess everything up. On it. So to get the door open, you gotta have the top off, like I say. Reach down inside, the latch is right here. There's a little plastic tab, it's just a round circle that sticks out the top. Pull it up, it'll let you get the door. Um, so there's this spring that holds this rubber seal to the front of the machine and what we're going to do is we're going to take this panel off from those two torque screws, set it up on top, and then we're going to take the front off. Um, there's a little button here that says push, this drawer slides out, simple, never done that before so it's obviously easy. And two torques. Head screws there, and then we get them. We'll be right back. Just grabbed everything out of the toolbox. So the torque sizes are all T something or another. I don't have my glasses on here. I can't see. Not that one. All right, that's it. That is a T twenty T two zero. You might have that if you have a. These are just regular torque screwdrivers, but if you have one of those kits like comes with a cordless drill with all the different bits and stuff like that, probably have one in there. Not all that uncommon. I'm going to do my best not to drop this down inside the machine here. Alright, so two T20 torques. So this side is free. Looks like there's two nuts on top, two screws on top. It's a quarter inch nut driver. One on the right. One on the left. Okay. 
one set of wires here, but it looks like they're long enough for us to just set this lid up there. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna reach down. Open this door. So there's this big spring that comes, there's a wire and a spring that keeps it under tension. two loops on the end of the wire. I'm just going to hook one. Hopefully I'm not going to mess this up. Alright, so that's off. So that releases the seal from this front stamped sheet metal. I don't know how the door latch works. If it's Connected inside. This looks like we might have to take the door latch off to remove the front panel. So there's four screws across the bottom. Again, a hex head, quarter inch draw. There's one. Machine's got about an inch of water standing in it, but even if I got that out first, apparently it's gonna have a bunch more to let go since the drain's down at the bottom. So I'm just gonna leave that inside for now and see if I can just catch it all as it comes out with the shop vac. If you don't have a shop vac, I think you probably can use a carpet cleaner. It just needs to be able to suck up liquid carpet cleaner should work just as well as a wet dry shop vac. If you're using a your shop vac, make sure you take the paper filter out first. Some of them you got to kind of convert it. Some of them you just take the paper filter out. Other ones you take the paper filter out and replace it with this like coarse foam filter thing. All right, well, I had to switch to my phone here. The uh, little handy cam ran out of battery. So I've got the front off. I'm not sure where the handy cam ran out of battery. There's three screws on the top here, here, here that were 5 16 inch head. Um, you can see the door latch is still connected by the wires. If you want to take that off, it's T20 Torx. But I think for the purposes of this, we can just leave it. Um, leave it connected and just swing the door around. Ow. So, um, the videos I've seen on the web show the filter right there in the front, but uh, this one's not. It's you can see it there though, further down. So, that is gonna, I'm gonna, you can see it's like a thumb screw. I'm going to open that up. Water's going to go everywhere. So I'm not going to hold this phone while I do that. I'm going to have the shop vac running as I open that and hopefully catch most if not everything. Um, if you don't have a wet dry shop vac, I think you can use a uh, carpet cleaner. I said some of this on the video on the Handycam, but I'm not sure where it cut off. Uh, carpet cleaner should be able to suck up the liquid just as well as this uh, shop vac. If you have a wet dry shop vac, make sure you convert it to wet function by taking out the paper filter. Some of them you need to put a foam filter in there. Some of them you just take the paper filter out. Um, and I'll report back in a few minutes after I've opened this up. Alright, I'm <clears throat> back to using the handy cam. Hopefully I can stitch all these together on YouTube. So, um, <clears throat> here's the filter cleaned out. That thing was packed solid with about an inch thick of uh, carpet parts and just solid dirt like sand. Um, so uh, 
it's threaded around the outside. It seemed like I had to keep turning it and turning it and turning it, but actually it was just stuck from all the junk. And um, even though I had the shop vac running full tilt down here, um, it wasn't nearly fast enough to suck up all the water that came pouring out. So uh, make sure you have plan B. There's water. A lot of water went down here. Um, I'm going to see if we can get the camera to look inside this thing. Probably not too clear here. Anyway, that's a trap. Um, pain to get to, but it's better than not having a trap at all. Maybe I can use my Owen's flashlight. We can do this again here. So that's inside. Unfortunately on this machine it's 90 degrees to the opening so I can't really see in there. Um, it's only by putting the camera in there that I can see. Looks like there's a bunch of junk in there still. So I'm going to try and clean that out completely and then put that cap back on there. Alright, so I really want to do my best to get this uh, the filter socket cleaned out completely. Um, it's difficult to get in there. I've been trying to shove a brush in there, spraying water in there with like a plant mister, but I can still feel a lot of sand. So next plan is just put a frisbee down there to catch some catch water, and I'm just going to pour water in the drum here. Um, and uh, see what happens. So, so one quarter of the time. Mostly, I want to rinse the sand off that seal so that the O ring, when I put the filter back in, doesn't leak. So now I'm pouring this water in the drum. Oh, yeah, look at all that. So one quarter of the time, definitely from how dirty it is, that makes sense. Try and clean it out completely. Don't just rely on cleaning that uh, filter part that comes out. See if you can clean the filter housing itself. Yeah, gnarly. It's full of sand. All right, I'm going to do that a couple times. Okay, so after running like 10 quarts of water through there into the Frisbee and dumping it out, it's still putting sand out at the bottom. When I put water in the drum, it's still rinsing sand out through the drain trap, but uh, not nearly as much as the first few times. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back in, this filter. Um, I'm going to see if I can hold the camera and put the filter in at the same time. <sighs> Makes me think I should only ever wash clean clothes, not dirty clothes. So much, hard to believe that sand is going to come out of there. So, it's going to screw in clockwise, you know, if this is a clock face, it's going to screw in clockwise. That, black o-ring there is a seal for uh, those of you that don't know so you want to make sure that face in here is clean which is actually still kind of sandy despite all the water I run through there so even though there's still sand coming out at least I'm going to get the seal face free of sand so that that o-ring doesn't get chewed up doesn't want to drip doing this by feel. Alright, that feels pretty good there. And, uh, presumably that filter can only go in one way. Looks like this. So it sits the main, main part 
down and the uh, uh, vertical part back there towards the back side where the pump is. And then I'm going to just screw this back in. I guess I'll just keep going until I can't turn it anymore. Alright, it feels like it actually stopped there, like it's seated. So I think it was sort of compressing that O-ring and then it's gotten to a point where it's seated all the way in. So just keep turning it, you should feel it sort of set against the, the back of the, the seat. Alright, I'm going to wipe this up and then I'm going to put the front of the machine back together. All right, I'm going to try and video the rest of this with my iPhone because my handy cam's not working out too well. The batteries are toast. Um, try and set this so you can see what's going on. Okay, so I'm done cleaning the filter. The filter's screwed back in. I'm going to put the front door back on and uh, reattach the seal. So. I've still got these wires connected here for the door latch, door latches. I'm going to try and be pretty careful with that. Um, it looks like there's a hanger here and a hanger here that this front panel can just be dropped up on top of. Okay. Um, we're going to do this in the reverse order of how I took it apart. I'm not sure if there is a particular order. Well, there's three screws up on top. I always just set things. Not quite snug, just get the screws up where they're gonna be. Don't start tightening everything until you know everything else is lined up. So let's check this seal before we go too far here. So these, those three screws are just setting up there. It's hanging on the hangers, pretty stable. Let's get this seal out. You also want to make sure and clean down in here if you haven't already. I cleaned that a bunch of times in the process of trying to get this machine clean before I realized I was just going to have to open it up and clean that filter. I've um, never done this before. Putting this back on, hopefully it's all straightforward. You're just going to get a real time view of it. So there's a lip, you want to get that seal, seal's got like a little recess, it matches the lip of the steel. That looks nice on there. Now the spring was up here, it's a pretty tight spring. Um, I'm going to start with it a little bit off center, assuming it's going to sort of stretch. And I'm going to run counterclockwise from the, from midnight to 9 p.m. Oh, this is going to be, yeah, this is going to be fun here. All right, plan B, I'm going to start at the bottom. It's I've got this spring, so it's going to be centered at midnight or high noon, whenever you want to look at it. And then it's under the seal here. It's 
almost like a three-handed job. I'm not sure how these guys do this. self-evident. Alright, let's try it with the string at the spring at the top. Alright, I'm sure there's probably a whole separate video about how to do this. You might be chopping this part out for you guys. The spring is really st stiff. <sighs> My buddy's coming home, so maybe I'm going to have him help me. Hey, Pat. Yo. You want to help me? Sure. I got the video camera on, just FYI. Okay. Um, I'm not naked, so I'm cool. So this, uh, I took this spring s seal mm -hmm. thing off, but it sort of needs three hands to get it back on. Okay. Um, so if you, like, why don't you come over here on the left and hold six o'clock and nine o'clock? So it's, it's just pushing. You feel that? Yeah. And then. It's got to sit down. There's like a lip on the yeah, steel. I can, I can feel it. So if you just need a little, a little more slack, just for a second. Oops, too much slack. Oh well, there's always going to be some point where I'm not on it. Okay. So the seal rubber thing's got to stay on there. Let go that part down there. It's a tough spring, Jesus. Yeah, it is. Get that off. Hey, it came off easy. Yeah. Can you push that over midnight? coming off here, isn't it? No. It's falling off. It's got the rubber. Is it pinched it or something? Yeah, it's taking the rubber in with it. That helps. Well, that was good. All right, did we get it? Pinched the rubber right there. Yeah, yeah. I'll try and sort this. Is all right, beauty, thank you. All right. <laughs> So again, those aren't <laughs> completely tight.
Screws like these, you always want to turn counterclockwise a little bit until you feel it drop into the thread. And then go clockwise and thread it in. You don't want to cut a new thread. You talking to me or the camera? Camera. I brought it, Pat. I tried it, didn't work. Fuck. Yeah. Um, it's under. It's. It's. I think it's connected, but right now with it. Yeah. Claire liked that place. Oh, cool. You have the. Uh, you went to, to Pokey Fish or whatever it was called. Oh yeah. Uh, and she had uh, the Pokey Burrito. Oh okay. Uh, which was a. Uh, she said. Tofu cabbage. Traditional sauce wrapped up in the seaweed burrito. She loved it. Oh, good. Need more help, Jay? Or uh, no, I'm done, Pat. Thank you. We're gonna take off in the evening. Oh, okay. Put the truck back up on it, so we'll ramp. I'm gonna take my car out front. Okay. <laughs> 